Hi, this is Brandon. Today, we're going to talk about laying out the UVs for a character's head in Maya. The first thing we're going to do is make sure we are in UV editing mode. Select all of the UVs, go to create, and you could do automatic, planar, any of these really here. I like to do either automatic or camera-based. Let's do camera-based this time. Now, this is going to make a mess. It's going to make a big mess, and that's okay, because right now, all we need to do is create the UVs first. They need to exist before we do anything after that. Go back to object mode. This character has a mohawk going down the back, which is actually going to assist me quite a bit. Regardless of what your character looks like, cut a seam down at least the middle of the head all the way to the back. Go to edge mode. and I'm actually going to select it all the way around. But again, regardless of what your character looks like, I would recommend starting from at least the center of the head, going all the way down the back of the head until you reach any kind of clothing or, or something similar. Then go over to the UV layout. Shift right click, cut, and I'm going to double click these other edges as well. Anytime you've got a pole or something like this, you'll have to make sure and continue clicking. All right, shift right click, cut. Get that set up. Make sure and cut the rest of the mohawk. I did grab around here, perfect. Now another place to cut that's popular and useful is around the neck somewhere. So if you have any any kind of a basic crease or a good place to hide that, you wanna to try to hide your UV seams as much as possible. It's not an, it's inevitable some of them are going to show, but the idea is to try to conceal them as much as you can. Shift right click cut. I'm gonna make a few more cuts, but just to show the basics, we'll go over here and we will go to unfold tab, unfold. And this is what we've got so far. I then like to go to under the Arrange and Layout tab, go to Layout. I also like to go to Select Edge Mode, so let's just right-click Edge, and then select something that's going down the center of these UV shells. Uh, that will redo here in a second. This needs some love. But then go to Orient Edges, and this will straighten them out so that they are either vertically or horizontally aligned. This is actually quite important, so I'd highly recommend doing this. Okay, next we're gonna go in and let's shape up this mohawk a bit. And I am going to start with the simple bits. Let's cut along here. Again, I'm just double clicking to select this whole edge loop. Okay, good. I wanna make sure to get this bottom piece as well. Anywhere you have a seam, you're going to have a hard edge. It's gonna show up, it's gonna render as a hardened edge instead of a soft edge. So that's something to keep in mind and anything like this that already has a hard edge, you might as well cut because it helps make smaller pieces so you can distribute them a little more evenly. All right, once these are selected, back over to the UV layout panel, shift right click, cut. I'm selecting right click, UV shell, select all of this, go to unfold. Again, it's kind of a mess. Right in here, looks like we missed a few edges. So I'm gonna go in and grab those. Right now, symmetry is on, which while I'm cutting is fine, but when I start laying things out, I do not want symmetry on. But again, we'll cut this, UV shell, grab all of these, unfold, much better. I'm gonna grab everything again, go to layout. Now it's important to do this periodically, especially at the end, right before you start hand placing things, because layout will lay out your textile density consistently. You want to make sure you have consistent textile density, which means all these pieces are the same size relative to each other. That way you don't get some pieces with more detail and some pieces with less detail on the model. Okay, so we also want to go through and cut this. This shape here is not really conducive to good UVing. If I want to draw anything around here, that's going to be a real pain. I want to lay this out straight, and I will show you a trick here in just a moment on how to do that. So those two edges selected, shift, right click, cut. Right click, go to shell, and you guessed it, we are going to unfold it. Now again, this doesn't really help us a whole lot, right? So the trick here is if I go to jump in object mode first, shift right click, multi-cut. I'm going to add a temporary, I'm, are, are you done Kato? Yeah. All right, I'm going to add a temporary edge loop to about the center of this UV shell. First, I'm gonna take symmetry off, W, left click, up, take that off. I'm gonna select this one edge. I'm gonna go down to straighten shell. And like magic, it straightens this whole thing out. 
if I didn't have this trick, I would have to go through and hand move all these, these individual UV pieces, and it is a pain. Believe me, I did it for years before I figured this trick out. Holy crap, this saved my life when I figured this out. Straighten shell, nice and straight. Now, it's not completely perfect, right? So what I'm gonna do now is we're gonna go select, go to UV mode, select all the UVs, and now go to straighten UVs. So with just a few clicks, we straighten both of those UV shells out. And now if I decide to paint on this and paint an edge right along here, it's extremely easy to do in my painting software. You say, well, now we have this extra edge loop. We added geometry. You're right. Double click that, shift right click, delete edge, it's gone. And our UV shells are straightened out. All right, moving right along on the mouth. Let's jump in here real quick. So I've created a mouth bag inside of this. So there's a hollow space inside. Currently, it's all bunched up right in here, and we don't want that. I'm going to grab an edge loop in here that won't be seen too easily from the outside, but doesn't deform too much. So this little ridge right here should be good. Shift, right click, cut. There's some debate about whether you should cut the eyes out. I've done both. I've cut them out and maybe shrunk them down just a bit. I've also left them inside, and it doesn't really, as long as it's not deforming the face too much, it's actually not a problem. Truly, actually, same with the ears. Now, with these ears, the way they kind of pop up and they're kind of larger ears, I'm going to cut these. So double click. I've got to remember my symmetry is off. So I can either go back and select all this over here, or I can go W, left click, symmetry, turn that on. And I'm just going to go and Try to find the best possible path. Let's go here instead. That's that's a little more hidden. Hey, let's get real crazy. Let's go back here. All right. Yeah, from the angle this is going to be seen at, that seam is actually probably pretty well hidden. I always try to think about where my seams. I'm going to be painting in Substance Painter, but Substance Painter, it does a really good job of hiding seams, but still I, I like to hide them as best I can. So back over here to the UV side, shift, right click, cut. And in just a moment, I'm gonna unfold all this stuff and get this all to level out, but there's no reason to do it more than I need to. Let's go to object mode, and I'm going to isolate this. Yeah, I think I'm gonna leave those actually. Now this base down here, just gonna double click along this edge to select all of this. Shift, right click, cut. And I'm actually going to cut it back down in the back again, trying to hide these seams. And I may cut down the center here, but let's see how this all unfolds here in just a moment. Unfold. Ooh, that opened right up. Ah, you see I unfolded this? I don't want to unfold those. Let's move those out of the way. Unfold all this. And then do include these for the layout. And that will again make sure the textile density is correct. Anything that is not sitting horizontally or vertically like I'd like it, I'm going to select and adjust. If I have diagonal pieces, when I go to paint these, the more angular you have things and the less uniform you have them, the more risk you have with stepping when it comes to mit mapping, especially in a game engine. Mit mapping is basically the game engine automatically derezzes your texture size, and as it does that, you will start to see pixels, and anytime along your edge you see those edges you'll see pixels stepping, and the more of an angle it's on, the worse it gets. The more vertical it is, the less you'll see them. Bring it to edges. Again, I'm going to turn off symmetry. Lay all these out. And this isn't going to stay perfect. I'm going to do a little better job here in just a moment because I need to get the rest of my pieces cut up as well. Okay, those are both selected. Now, anytime I've got a cylinder like this with a bevel on it, I like to ask myself, okay, What's the angle, and is it going to be better to go along this edge or this edge? In this case, because that angle is more minimal, I'm going to go with that edge. Make sure they're both selected. They're not. I'm going to go W, symmetry. Okay. Shift, right click, cut. And then I'm going to also cut the bottoms. Right click, shell, unfold, layout. these edges. Again, I'm grabbing this vertical edge. When I paint this, I want to know which way is up, right? So all of these cylinders turned out pretty well, except for this one. So I'm going to go to shell, and before I do that, W, 
left click symmetry to turn off symmetry. And this sounds silly, but every time I go to rotate a cylinder, I swear it plays some optical illusion. You hold down J and you can rotate it, but as I'm rotating it this way, it looks like it's turning the opposite way. So I always start from where that line was and move it to where I want it to go, just so I can keep track of that. And then I test it. This one, and that line is up. Fantastic. All right, we'll test the rest because better to know now versus when I start painting going, ah, I painted the thing upside down. That's, that's the worst. All right. Now these are always kind of a fun shape to do. I like to grab the inside edge on these. Shift right click cut. And then I try to grab an edge that is hidden. Typically I do the bottom, but since we can see that, but we don't see up inside over here, let's do, let's do this one. Shift right click cut, unfold again, right to edges. You're like, hey, that's, that's pretty uniform. That's pretty good. Well, you know, we can do a little bit better because again, there will be a little a little bit of deforming when it comes into matching it up, but the seam is hidden as best I can right inside the nose. I want to straighten this out as much as I can to make it easiest to paint. Straighten UVs does a wonderful job. I think it was back in about 2018, Maya really stepped up their UV game. Things got a lot better. All right, let's go and hide these. Okay, I don't have backs on here. That was by design. I'm going to grab these corners. Now, because I've got kind of this zigzag up in here, I'm going to need to get all of the insides and outsides of these. And I can do a few things. I can go along each edge completely, or I can just kind of splay this out a little bit. Let's, let's splay it out and see how ugly it looks. Again, W left click to do symmetry. Shift right click, cut. Shell, unfold, layout. Not terrible, but not pretty. Just because this is, there's so much going on inside of here, I am gonna cut these off. Also gonna cut it here. In fact, hey, let's just go all the way around. Check, we got everything. Missed that one, that's why I check. Shift, right click, cut. UV shell, grab them all. Unfold, rinse, repeat, lay out. Alrighty. Now if I go to select everything, see what I've got left. Still a lovely mess in here. Let's get these eyeballs. Okay, so actually I I face these poles forward on purpose so that I can go in and grab the eyes somewhere wherever I think these irises are going to be. And I typically go, I don't know, where it's not going to be seen too well. Let's do here. I'm gonna show, I'll show you why I care about this here in just a minute. I'm actually going to enlarge the pupil piece versus the rest so I can get more resolution out of that which is one of the only pieces that I do this with on a organic form. Okay, now I'm gonna go wrap this one back. Again, I'm just doing shift click to continue that around. Shift right click cut. All right, object mode, well UV shell unfold, lay out. Shift click to grab all these. Again, making sure I have my top selected, orient to edges, beautiful. W left click symmetry off. And for consistency's sake, I'm going to turn these horizontal. Technically, this should go the other way. Am I right? Am I crazy? So we have that one and that one facing in, that one, that one. That works. Lay out. All right, so now we need to get the suspenders done. I also like to double check and make sure, did I delete the insides? Yes, I did. Punk rock points for me. Okay, at minimum, I need to cut these edges here and here. And I could just splay that out like you flatten a box basically, right? Did I select those? Nope. W left click symmetry, cause I'm lazy. And whoops, shift right click cut. Then UV shell, getting ahead of myself. Unfold and see how they do just kind of lay out like that, which is fine. I mean, that works. I could just leave them like this. But uh, again, if I want to paint across these better, W left click turned off symmetry, grab this one, holding down the J key to snap when I rotate up. All right, layout to make them the same size. And hey, let's try that trick again, right? W left click symmetry, shift right click multi cut. Let's put this in the middle. Okay, great. Double click my edge. Again, this only works with symmetry off. So turn this back off. All right, and then we'll go to 
straighten shell, straighten shell, UV, straighten UV shell. See, and it's not 100% perfect, but it gets it really pretty. Thanks, autosave. Gets it really close. I do always like to go in and, and kind of just make sure it's correct, right? Like go in and I know this one and this one, this should be underneath that. So let's go to, where's it at? Align and snap. And I wanna move this one over. So I will select this little button and then everything else should be pretty uniform, right? In fact, out of strict paranoia, let's do that. Okay, and that did actually take care of those. Let's do this one, grab that one. And yeah, I can actually close this. Stack shells. Now, I can leave them stacked if I want to paint them exactly the same, which I think I actually might. But in order to do that, one of them has to be flipped because right now it's been a, it's, it's a mirror image, right? Let's put this on this side. Left to left helps my brain a little better. So over in the transform tab, I can go to flip on the U direction. And U works kind of like X, Y, it's UV. U is across the bottom, V is going upwards. So I flip that, you see how that moved it just a little bit? Close this, stack them again. Half the reason I'm doing this as well is to go over and I know that this is actually supposed to be in just a little further because when I created these, I know that this is the same height as this. These automatic tools do a great job, but always make sure logic is staying logical. And way to test this is this little checkerboard box up here. This needs to be, both of these materials need to be off in order to see this. What I'm looking for here is making sure that things are not stretched too much. There is some stretching in here that I don't absolutely love. Well, actually, we're gonna get rid of that. Let's do that real quick before I forget. Select this edge, select this edge, shift right click, delete. That actually helped out a little bit. All right, now I do know on, see these edges, you can move this over and these squares should be pretty uniform and that's looking a lot better. Grab these as well. Put squares that look like squares, not rectangles. So if they're stretched, Something's got to move. UV shell already. Select all this. Now I'm going to select everything. Hit layout. Again, this is automatically resetting my texel density. Anything I had stacked, unfortunately, when I hit layout, will unstack it. So be aware of that. Double check, make sure everything is oriented. Or at least not on a diagonal. Okay, these eyebrows, I really didn't fix those up like I should have. Now something else I can do is grab these, UV shell, kind of collect all these pieces here and bring them off the zero to one. Now when I'm, when I'm done with this, everything in here needs to be in my zero to one square, right? I cannot have anything outside of this, but I can work outside of this when I'm fixing things up. All right, symmetry on, W left click, edge, and that will just select both edges for me. Orient, orient edges, orient edges. I want to do this, I need to select an internal edge. If I select an external edge, it will also select its neighboring edge and undo anything else I might have already done. Uh, I don't actually mind how that looks, so we'll just leave that. However, keep that in mind. Like these little pieces where it's just a single piece, you may just have to live with that fact. But I would go in and straighten all these out. Plus it's good housekeeping and having random little diagonal pieces everywhere. Just, it's harder to paint, doesn't look great. Orient edges, let's fix these, orient edges. And again, with this texture applied here, it is, I can turn this off to select it here, but I can't see anything, so I just turn it off. I look at this, I want nice, even, uniform squares as much as I can get. A little distortion is natural because it's a it's an organic form. Too much distortion is a bad thing and needs some attention. Overall, this is not looking too bad. See so how this is on a diagonal? Ha, I want to, die. I want to turn that. I'm also going to go in and, because this is facing vertically here, maybe it's my OCD, but I just like to have these vertical here too. It could work horizontal. I just prefer to know where my stuff's at when I'm painting it. Holding down J. J to rotate and snap, 
fat finger in the space bar. One final time, I'm going to select everything and hit layout. And now my text width density is correct. So this phase is my hand layout phase. And this is where I want to go through and hand pick and put things where I know they will fit best. Currently, this is not, this works, but it's not the ideal layout. Now at this phase, I like to ask myself, am I going to stack anything? And what I ask is, am I going to see, say the Mohawk, am I going to see this side and this side at the same time ever? No, that's almost impossible, right? I'm, there's no reason to have those two be different variations unless there's something very specific or unique about this, I might as well stack those. I've only got so many pixels I can use, and the bigger these UV tiles are, the more resolution they'll have on the model. So if I can stack some things, it's to my advantage. Now, I also need to ask myself, does there need to be any variation on it, right? So I'm gonna look at the concept, and this concept is by Justin Booth, actually. Justin Booth Art, a little plug for him. On Instagram, he's got some amazing art. Super talented artist. Check this guy out. Justin Booth Art on Instagram. Super, super cool guy, actually. But with this, I think I'm going to stack the earrings. I'm definitely going to stack the suspenders. Definitely going to stack the mohawk pieces. Possibly even the eyebrows. What I could do is manually stack these and flip them and stack them like I did with these two pieces over here. But something else that actually makes this go a little bit faster is to literally cut the model in half, mirror it back over, and then that way everything stacks along with it. So let's do that. Now, I do want to make sure first, we go to vertice, and I'm going to select one, double click. I wanna make sure that all these vertices going through the entire model center, that these are actually in the center. Okay, looks like everything's selected. I'm gonna go up here, sometimes this is hidden in here, but next to uh, almost the very end, this little blow up piece. If I have everything selected on the X, because I know I'm facing front, in the X direction, I can hit a zero and then hit enter. And that will change the absolute value of all of these vertices. So if any of these were off a little bit, Say for example, this one, if this was off and I select this, hit zero, pops them all back into the middle. This is very important when I mirror. I like to go to my front view, make sure symmetry is off. It is, go to face mode. And I try to get as close as I can to that center. And then go in and check and make sure, especially in these little polygons that I did actually select everything I wanted to and nothing that I didn't want to. Usually around the nose, between the eyes, little details. Then I'm gonna delete that. I'm gonna go to face mode, just double click on the side. Let's delete that. Face mode, delete that. And then delete this one as well. Now I am not going to mirror the eyes. In theory, I could. The problem with just mirroring it, though, is where these clip into each other, I need them to be able to continue to clip into each other. Because, for instance, if I select just this one, and I, during animation, I go to rotate this, I need this to be able to move freeform. If I mirror them, it will glue these together as one object and move them like this, which will be bad. Your rigging artist and animator will yell at you. I need to make sure my gizmo is in the middle. Double click on any of these, brings up the tool settings. This happens to be applied, assigned to the move tool. And what I can do is I can hit zero pivot. And then if I reset it, it should it will put that pivot dead center into the world. This also matters because where the pivot is set is where it will mirror from. So now let's mirror it back. Okay, I'm just gonna start with this top headpiece and I'm going to hit my space bar and go to mesh, mirror. And make sure to grab this dialog box. Also, if needed, I can also go to Mesh Mirror up here in the menu set if you prefer. But make sure to bring up this dialog box. I need to make sure to go in the X direction and in the positive X direction. With the selected, gizmo in place, hit apply, and hey, look at that. Now, what happened here though, is when it flipped, it carried the UVs over. I do not want them to flip like that, so I'm gonna undo that. I'm going to uncheck Flip UVs and do this again. 
So now it mirrored it and it left the UVs where they are. Some of these UVs I am going to want to bring back and unstack, but this is a quick way to get these mirrored. All right, the next thing I like to do is again, double check, double click on this line and make sure if the line goes all the way through, most likely you have no errors. Sometimes you will get a little vertice that decides to pop out to the side or do something weird and it doesn't actually weld it together. When you double click on that edge, if it stops, that usually tells you if there's an issue. The only other reason it'll stop on its own is if maybe you have a pole or something in the way. All right, so now on the head itself, just the head, not the mohawk, I'm gonna select that top piece, select one, select two. I'm gonna double click all the way down and I want this to stay disconnected. Now over here, I'm gonna go shift, right click, move and sew. Oh, nothing happened, but the line disappeared. Well, what I have to do now is unfold it. Go back to my UV toolkit and I'm gonna hit unfold. Orient edges. Now this is bizarre. This is not a straight line. Let's try a few things here. Let's turn symmetry on. That helped a little, but still didn't help it all the way. And I'm gonna move it off the, away from everything else. Okay, so down this center line here, this is not even, this is not gonna work. This face needs to be symmetrical, especially where it is symmetrical here and it's not symmetrical air. That is a problem. Now, I'm gonna select this object, select this UV shell, and I'm gonna go to the Optimize tool. I'm gonna to make it big to cover the whole face piece. Ah, look at that, leveled that right up. Now, if this is too small, it will distort things and make it asymmetrical unintentionally. So make it big, cover the whole UV shell, and let it do its magic. Hit W to get out of it. And I can actually do the same thing with some of these. Optimize, just unfold that thing nice and easily. Or at the edges, good to go. Now some of these others I don't want cut in half, right? I do want these side pieces of the mohawk separate. I don't want the middle pieces separate. So I'm gonna go in and select this entire line going down the center. In fact, I shouldn't have a problem since I selected one, two. Double click clear back here, select that whole edge loop, beautiful. Shift right click, move and sew. And I can go to UV shell, grab all these shells, get all those and move these up here, select all these, unfold them. Again, they're not gonna be, they're gonna shift, that's fine. Grab the center, clear back here, double click to select them all, orient to edges. And now we play the game of moving it back. Now you can do this step in the beginning and just mirror it over. However, I do like to wait towards the end because I like to see what I want to mirror first. I like to look at my UV setup before I commit to this system or this method. Because in some cases you don't want to mirror anything. Okay, oh, this is the mouth bag. All right, so this should be the optimized tool trick again. Ooh, look at that. Such a good job. Double click, select it, orient edges. I do happen to know the way this looks inside. It's just this little bag in there. It almost looks like a, like a an old-fashioned coin purse or something. But I know that I want to get inside of here. Right now, this is stretched out in a very strange way. There's no seams inside of here, so I do want to go in and cut some edges. Because I modeled this, I do know where these seams lie. Cut, unfold, orient edges. All right, that's going to deform much better. Okay, the ears. Now this I want to flip, as I do, I do not want to stack my ears. Okay, go transform. Flip. And sometimes when I do stack things, I will grab those shells and move those off to the side and keep those together. Get this down here. This I want to stay cut. But I do need to flip that. This I'm actually going to merge and sew. Unfold. Orient edges, rinse, repeat, you know the drill. Now 
Now these I straightened out, but I don't want both of them. I don't necessarily want them stacked. They can sit side by side each other. But again, we're going to need to flip this. Sometimes I'll move everything out of the way. Just put back the biggest pieces first. Now I need to make sure there's a little bit of space between the edges. Doesn't need to be much, a couple pixels, maybe four or eight, depending on your resolution size, but just making sure there's not a lot there. And now I'm probably gonna move things around, but I want to go in and start to lay things out by hand. And again, I take my biggest pieces first, and this is just playing Tetris. Remember old school Tetris, back on the old, uh, the old Game Boy bricks. That's that was my first first console ever, actually, when I was a a wee little lad. That'll sure date me, but I mean, we we you know, I'm pretty sure we got it way after it came out, but still, like uh, old school Tetris. Okay, now before I start to arrange this, I need to make sure I have all the parts. Okay, this I am going to mirror, but I don't want to. I do want to stack it. Double click my tool settings. Again, zero point. You can set the D key and move the gizmo off and hit W or something to, to put it back. If I hit zero pivot, hit reset, it does put it in the middle. Spacebar, mesh, mirror, X, positive X. Again, I did not want to flip the UVs on purpose. Object mode looks good. While I've got this up, let's also do the earring. It would make sense as well to arrange these somewhat so that when I flip them, they're consistent. Go in, align them back to object mode, apply, looks good. If the gizmo ever does not show up, hit W, apply, W to get out of that, looks good. All right, let's select everything and make sure we have all of our necessary parts. All right, now these eyeballs. I want to make sure, again, I like to just even double, triple, quadruple check that I have got them facing upwards. And that looks to be so. I selected these and that corresponds. Okay, that's one eye, that's one eye. Let's do this, get them all to line up. They really don't have to be perfect. I just like to start this way. I may move these later. Hell, I might even do this. I don't know, we'll see what happens. And again, to see all of my UV pieces, I need to select the whole object. All right, now this piece I am not going to see much of. It's in the back, it's in the bottom, and truly I'm not gonna do a lot with it. I'm not gonna paint much detail on it. I've talked about this in a previous video about resizing when you UV. Yes, you can do it, be cautious. I'm going to shrink this down a little bit because to me it's not as high a priority and I'm not going to see it much. Now I need to be careful not go too far, but I can do a little bit and then that basically gains me some more space on the UV tile to work with, right? That over there. On that same note, the eyes I mentioned, I was going to scale those up a little bit. I want a little more detail in these. I'm not going to go nuts because it's also taking up space from something else. So I want to be cautious of that, be aware of that. Those are stacked as well. And I really am just playing Tetris, just puzzle fitting things in. And this stuff kind of moves. It's just kind of like a, just, a, just a big moving puzzle. Does this fit? Now it's a little bit close. I do not want anything to touch. That's bad. Yeah, I'll move that out for a minute. Yeah, I'm just gonna do all that. This really is a process of trial and error. And for me, truly, I don't mind doing UVs. I've been doing, doing UVs for a long time, actually. And uh, like I mentioned earlier, UVs have gotten much better in Maya. Much, much, much better. They're still tedious. I have trained myself to know that I can't be in a rush when I'm trying to UV something. Just have to relax and just just treat it like a game, like a game of Sudoku or a game of Tetris or just something. I don't know. Just kind of let the Zen, let the Zen flow, right? Kind of just generally place these and move things around a little bit more. Like I said, at this point, it's really just about playing Tetris, just puzzle fitting things together. And the more practice you get, the faster you will go. A lot of people hate UVs. They try to rush through it as fast as they can, and truly. If you don't lay out your UVs correctly after all the time you spent modeling and all the time you're gonna spend painting, it really just ruins the model. It is absolutely 100% worth laying out good UVs. 
I'm gonna go there, this down here. Now what I wanna do is now I'm gonna tell myself, okay, can I stay within this extra little grid line here and maybe earn a little space? I wanna be careful because if I get too close to some of these things, this could bleed. When things start to mit map, they can get ugly and it can bleed. So I need to be careful about that. Also as a reminder, UV sets tile, meaning if I've got something here, this will repeat on and on and on forever in each direction. So basically this piece ends up touching this piece. It kind of stamps out, if that makes sense. Like this whole tile technically exists in this whole tile. That's why they've got this whole matrix looking thing here. So I need to make sure that what's on this side isn't too close to the edge either. Otherwise it can show up on this edge. I'm trying to stay within this line and see if I can shave off just a little bit going each way. I tend to also like to stack vertical pieces next to vertical pieces. It just helps, helps things conform a little bit. Probably helps my brain just process things a little bit. I typically do try to keep parts together. So the hair parts I, I want to have together, but if something happens to where I'm like, uh, I can move them around. Little pieces do move around more easily than anything else, obviously. So that can be helpful to bear in mind. And you could say again, well, why don't you just auto UV it? I mean, this is so much more tightly packed than an auto, auto UV could ever get. Packing by hand really is just worth it. Now I could noodle this a little further and really try to pack this in tighter. I think if anything, I think I actually want to get a little more resolution out of these eyebrows. So I'm going to upscale these just a little bit. Alrighty, now because I stayed within here and here, I'm going to select everything and the gizmo goes in the middle. Well, if I hit the D key, D as in dog, and then hold down X, move this over, it will snap to the grid. Now let go, and I'm gonna hit R to scale. I'm going to very carefully scale everything up uniformly to get a little closer to that edge. And now I've got a lot more resolution here than I did to begin with. Kind of move things around a little bit, make sure things aren't too close to each other, give everything a little bit of breathing room. I wanna to try to fill about 80% of my UV tile here. 80% is a lot. I should get this as full as I can. I should try to get this as full as I can by scaling it up to the best of my ability. I'm looking at all these corners, making sure nothing touches. And overall, that's not terrible. I'd say we're ready to paint. All right, the next step is heading to Substance Painter. I have another video about exporting out of Maya for Substance Painter, so I'll leave that link in the description. And that's about the bare bones of it. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.